So welcome again, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about something unusual, um, especially that's very close to my heart uh, as I work with many small farmers. Um, and, uh, and, um, and, and that's related to beneficial insects. We usually talk about pest insects because we feel like they're overwhelming us, they're everywhere, but a uh, majority of the insects have an ecological role and they're beneficial and we should not forget that. Uh, so this, this presentation is an, an attempt to show you some of my favorites uh, on beneficial insects and some of the ways you can get them commercially. So kind of focusing on those, these commercially available uh, insects. In fact, if you come to an extension event, um, I'll try to bring out my collection of beneficial insects, actual products. So I, I try to carry around with me a, 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 a kind of a vast collection of these beneficial insects to show you, uh, but I'll show you a few things today. So again, uh, once again, I always start out with uh, uh, a statement that all our programs uh, are open to everybody. Uh, anyone is welcome. Um, now, when we talk about pest management, you know, we talk about uh, these three levels of pest management, and you may have heard me speak multiple times, uh, the level one, level two, and level three, but you will notice that on the, on the left hand of the screen, I always emphasize on natural enemy conservation, and there's several ways you can conserve natural enemies, what you already have. We don't want to delete them from the ecosystem, so, uh, and some, some ways are, are to provide habitats, keep some habitats, uh, wildflowers, and there's several cover crop mixtures that help beneficial insects, keep them there, uh, reduce your pesticide use, don't spray unnecessarily. It also uh, causes pesticide resistance with overuse of chemicals uh, or even organic products, so it doesn't matter. So we just need to back off and do our best. And then targeted spray, uh, very important, is target your spray applications to where it's needed don't unnecessarily douse these plants with uh, pesticides and because they are very, very harmful. Very quickly, uh, the beneficial insects can be lost very quickly. So just a quick reminder uh, about these. Now, there are about three different types of natural enemies out there. This is uh, one of the slides that uh, our, one of our past students and postdoc put together and I continue to use it and it, it's evolving. But we have uh, predators, parasitoids or parasites, and then insect pathogens. These are the three general uh, natural enemies. Uh, the predators, of course, you recognize the, the lady beetle. There are several others we'll talk about, but lace wings, assassin bugs, there are just uh, amazing range of insects uh, that are predators. They will eat any of anything that's smaller than them, typically. Then you have the parasitoids or parasites. Uh, they're kind of slow acting, but they kill the insects, um, the pest insect internally. And then insect pathogens, that's where I still do a lot of research on the BTs, uh, the, which is the bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis, the fungi, and then, uh, or fungi, I don't know how you want to say it. And then viruses. Uh, the good thing about pathogens is they are more specific. Um, so there's, there's some level of safety there. Um, so these are the three uh, types of natural enemies. Uh, now, this is a very important slide um, where I just wanted to show you that, you know, don't, you cannot just tell insects by their colors or their shapes. You have to sometimes uh, look a little bit deeper, uh, but there are insects that are difficult to identify. A lot of times these sting bugs get a bad rap that they're all bad. They're actually predatory sting bugs that you can identify by looking at their mouth parts. And the one uh, with the red arrow on your screen has a short, very thick beak. It's like a proboscis or beak. Um, and it ends in that dark area, which is very sharp. So that's a predator that will pinch the body of a caterpillar, for example, or aphids and suck the juice out. Uh, so just remember that not all insects uh, uh, are bad. Uh, we have to be very careful and if you can take pictures uh, from different angles, don't just send us pictures for identification uh, from the top, go on the side. Sometimes the side profile helps, uh, helps me identify some of these insects quickly. Um, so just a little, um, uh, little tips there to, um, to help you and, and always take good pictures. Um, that's very important. But 
we are surrounded by beneficial insects. So we, we have to do a better job of conserving them. Now, these are some of the, my favorites uh, that are commercially available. So again, I'm not talking about a vast range of uh, non-commercial or the ones that are naturally present. There are so many beneficial insects and I can do a follow-up on the, uh, the other species of beneficial insects, but this is just the ones that you can buy online. And I'll, I'll talk about that here a little bit. Green lace wings, uh, these lace wings are some of my favorite insects just because they are very aggressive predators. In fact, they're so aggressive, they will actually kill each other if they can't find food. Um, but these lace wings are very delicate insects. Uh, the adults, you'll see them coming to your backyard light. Um, they have these large flimsy looking wings and they crash into, uh, into light bulbs and any, elect, you know, any bright source of light. Uh, but they're aggressive, the adults and the larva. You can see the larva on the bottom of the screen with those giant uh, mandibles sticking out uh, in front of the head. So uh, very aggressive predators. Um, and and the, the good trick to this is if you want immediate control of say aphids in your high tunnel, you should get these larvae and those larvae will go hunting as you release them. Uh, don't wait for the adults. You can also get adults if you want to kind of have a longer generation uh, and some more persistence, then uh, get the adults. Otherwise you can get the larvae. So there's choices you, you can do. Uh, and they're also aggressive on mites. Uh, I have not seen them feed on mites, but uh, uh, some of the literature indicates they're also very good at feeding on mites. So anything that's small, they will feed on these small insects. And they, they don't huddle as much as, as the some of the lady beetles do. Uh, so they, they spread out pretty uniformly. So this is just some ways they are being sold in the market. Uh, they are sold as, I think my pointer is moving hopefully on the screen, uh, but these are sold as these hexel units. These are cardboard and they have uh, the larvae, the eggs, and then they hatch into larvae. By the time they come to you, you can, you can have some larvae in there, but these are like cardboard units. You can also buy them uh, in wood uh, filling, these little, uh, these larvae are extremely small, by the way. The, that picture is a lot, lot bigger than what they really look like uh, in reality. Um, and then of course you can get the adults. And um, so there's different ways you can get these products, which is really great. Um, and we'll talk about some of the tips of how to order them. But again, these are mostly preventive type. So you don't want to wait. If you find aphids and you want to use them, use them. As soon as you can, don't wait for the aphids to blow up on you and there's way too many because then you already have a crop damage. So uh, uh, release them early. Of course, everyone loves lady beetles. So the one that is commercially available very commonly is the convergent lady beetle. And it's called the convergent lady beetle because it's on the, um, on the back of the, of, on the thorax right behind the head there's two lines that seem to converge um, and that's how it gets its name. So it's convergent lady beetle. Again, the larva is in the middle. It's an ugly looking larva. A lot of the uh, gardeners and farmers sometimes think that, what is that? Some kind of a new pest, it's not. It's a, a very ugly looking, but very aggressive predator. Uh, this is the larva of the lady beetle and the eggs are laid in bunches um, and, uh, uh, they're, they're fairly easy to identify. But again, these are very aggressive uh, predators of a large number of species, uh, aphids, even moth eggs, uh, and they're widely sold. Uh, the only problem I've seen them is they are sensitive to day length. And when, you're, uh, when we have fall coming uh, from the summer uh, to fall, during that transition phase, sometimes these lady beetles start to Huddle, to, uh, huddle together in the corner of a high tunnel or on the crops, or even they try to enter your house. Um, so you may be familiar with the Asian lady beetle. So they're very similar in habit, uh, but they are very popular. Um, and uh, uh, and they come with these, if you buy these, these uh, sometimes they come in cloth bags and sometimes they are in these plastic jars with food in them. So it keeps the insects alive. Um, now, one thing I will recommend is if you get these, you don't necessarily have to release them 
immediately, all of them, you can re release them sequentially and wait. So do it one week and then um, release more the following week. So you don't have to release everything at once. If you keep them in the in the cool, in the fridge, um, not freeze them to death, but in the fridge, just to calm them down and they will stay uh, for for a week or so. Um, I've tried that and I have, I have been successful. So for some of our lab experiments, we have done that and, and that works out. Uh, but again, make sure they have food, they have, um, they have enough water, uh, uh, the, the little cotton ball that's in there, uh, keep it soaked with water. So again, just a few little tips, but there's so many different ways these lady beetles uh, can be purchased uh, from websites. Uh, and you, you can actually some, see some of the websites and the pictures there. Another one that I have tried and and farmers love it uh, is is this one is the predatory bug the Oreos species um, and they are sold commercially they are very successful from ornamentals using the ornamental industry uh, to fruit and vegetable uh, especially greenhouses uh, they again I think they spread through the greenhouses and and uh, indoor ag structures very nicely if you release them. Um, and they're very aggressive. Um, and uh, you can see some of these pictures from the websites and the commercial uh, sellers. But um, uh, they're very popular in Europe. Um, sometimes there's a backlog. If you try to order them in to US, they're, they come, they may come from, from another source uh, with all kinds of paperwork attached. Um, but make sure you, you give enough time uh, to get them. And this is, uh, one of those biological products uh, with the predatory bug. Uh, so it comes in a nice jar, a nice bottle. Um, and it, this one's called Oriline uh, because the insect is Oreos. And they have all the directions there. The, the wonderful thing is these directions, for example, tells you like they may go into diapause uh, if, if your light and temperature uh, are not optimal. Uh, so pay attention to those details. Humidity is very important for any of these biological agents. They just don't like drought. If you have very dry conditions, that's typically not very good for these, these, uh, these beneficial insects. So you need a certain level of humidity uh, to maintain inside your uh, structure or, or field, um, and they do better. And there are a large number of predatory mites um, I have seen them being used in the ornamental industry uh, as well as on some large greenhouses, but you have to release these mites very close to the infestation where you have infestations, for example, of two-spotted spider mite, which is one of the most predominant mite species, pest species, and uh, these predatory mites will aggressively feed. Uh, they come in these little jars, so you're actually seeing a product uh, that we have got, and I intentionally test these. I buy them to see how effectively they come, and I, I may give them away to a farmer, but uh, or a demonstration uh, project. But I want to. I keep on testing uh, how these companies package uh, these products, and they do a really good job of uh, sending you uh, these in a styrofoam box, um, and they come overnight. So, and there's so many species to choose from, uh, for ranging from your Kind of dry conditions if you're in a hot dry environment to more uh, conditions where there's more humidity um, and then some some are a little bit more species specific compared to the others uh, the one that's very popular is uh, galandromus uh, occidentalis that's uh, and amblesias those are very popular popular ones uh, that are on the top mentioned on the slide there uh, but these are again uh, great mites they they look different, so you can actually look look at them through a handheld uh, magnifying glass if you want. Quickly about parasitoids. Uh, trichogramma is one of these parasitoids. So these are parasites. These are like tiny, tiny wasps. They're very small. They look like dust particles. If you open a, a vial of, uh, of these parasitoids, they just practically look like dust particles. Very small, hardly visible. But uh, trichogramma will lay eggs uh, inside these, these moth eggs. You can see the, the female there trying to lay eggs inside these uh, pest, pest insect eggs. And those the larva will develop and uh, it'll 
keep on perpetuating um, for some time and, and they will start to destroy these eggs. So again, very good paras uh, parasites. Uh, I think one of the largest selling parasites is trichogramma. Um, I've seen it being used on large acres in, from sugarcane fields to some of the other crops uh, in, in Asia uh, and in and India. But yeah, trichogramma is very popular and easily available. And then this one you may see if you got, if you're a gardener you may have seen um, your hornworms uh, tomato hornworms with these uh, funny looking they look like rice grains stuck on the back of these uh, hornworms but these are the cotacea it's a natural um, uh, parasite but it's, these are cotacea wasps that um, that uh, lay the eggs and then the, these are the, the cocoons of the pupa of that wasp um, and they essentially destroy the caterpillars. So if you see them, don't remove them. They look ugly, but that caterpillar is gonna die and those wasps that come out will reinfest other, uh, other hornworms and even army worms. Um, so these are good, good, in, good insects. So don't remove the, the ones that are infested um, like this. So it's a very, very common. And again, on a typical, in a wet, Cooler summers, you will see a lot of parasitization. So they like that moisture in the cooler weathers. If you want more information, we actually have a, a, a publication that I checked is online. It's ANR1432, if you want to write that down. Uh, but it's pest management in high tunnels that actually has a, a list of products. Again, I don't know which products are still available uh, from Copert or Syngenta. Uh, BioLine. I don't even know if Syngenta actually still has BioLine, um, but you can check on your own. But there are so many choices uh, if you are interested. Um, and those product names often are related to the scientific names uh, of these beneficial insects. So there's a lot of good information. Uh, just a quick suppliers. Uh, some of the things that I have tried, there might be others. So disclaimer that I'm not favoring one co company over the other but I have definitely tried Arbico Organics. I really like them. The customer service has been great. Uh, and so is Gardens Alive um, from Indiana. And then Rincon Vitova Insectaries is also pretty good. So this, these are some of the good ones that we have tried repeatedly. Now, when you order these products, don't order them on a weekend because they ship uh, overnight. And if you order on a Saturday, they may ship it and then the mail sits uh, in, a, in a post office or somewhere, and they may die in shipment. So try to schedule your, um, uh, your uh, beneficial insects on a weekday so that you can get it overnight. And you can, you can actually have them stagger your supply. You can, you can schedule that. Um, and then release the beneficial insects when insect populations are low, don't wait. If you already have an outbreak, these insects won't be very helpful in an outbreak situation. They prevent outbreaks. And then you can release, uh, stagger release them over time and then store the store some of the excess uh, and follow the directions if you can if you find directions. Some of these companies do a great job. I think their websites are, are sometimes better than some of the academ uh, academic websites truly uh, for details. So follow them, talk to the technicians at the companies and uh, get good products. So just again, to show you how these products are packaged, I have been really impressed with how they they come packaged. So if you're interested to learn more, just uh, uh, let me know. Uh, I will be glad to talk to you. Um, and then store them. Once they come in boxes, store them in your, ref in, in your refrigerator. Don't freeze them to death, uh, but you can store them uh, or keep them at room temperature away from uh, direct sunlight. Make sure the, the food that's there has moisture in it. So put some water to keep these insects alive. Um, but yeah, it's they do a really good job of packaging. Uh, again, to show you some of these, uh, there's a mealybug destroyer that we found one time. That was really impressive, very aggressive uh, predators. Uh, and the other thing is do a quality check. So when you get these products, look at the box, look at the insects and see if they're alive. If you see any problems, for example, uh, I had a shipment of green lace, lace wings that were dead. Uh, just call them and let them know they actually happily, these companies will happily replace you, uh, provide you another replacement products. Uh, so just 
uh, make sure that, the, that these, these come uh, in a good way and, and good condition for you. And don't expect miracles, as I always say, that uh, you know, these beneficial insects uh, only work the way you, uh, you know, the way, the right way, when you put them in the right way. Always remember to put them close to where you want the action. Don't put them half a mile away and, and expect miracles here. Um, so always put them where you want the action uh, and then follow the instructions. Keep them away from, from uh, sunlight. This is some pictures of farmers actually doing it uh, in high tunnels and also open field. Um, and they're really effective when you are putting them close to where you want the uh, target insects. Um, and then keep records. I always say keep records. I've met some great, uh, very innovative greenhouse producers who keep records and they have actually taught me a lot of what works, what not, um, and reduce your insecticide use definitely when you're using beneficial insects like these. Uh, if you want more information, we have a number of these uh, funny, humorous videos that you can watch in a short time, uh, less than two minutes, and you can know some of these. And there's, there's one on, on predatory insects, and you can access it through the Farming Basics phone app. So don't forget, you, if you're a visual person like me, watch them on your own time. And this is the phone app. Um, lots of good features. The most uh, popular feature, I'll tell you, is the call the regional extension agent function. Uh, in the app, so use it. Uh, uh, that's that's the most popular uh, and the best way to find your regional extension agent close to you. The most recent addition to this is the podcast. We also have the Farming Basics podcast that uh, Olivia Fuller and Jacob Kelly um, put together, and it's it's very great. Uh, Caitlin has been a co-host on that as well, and there's a number of tools that you can use. So this was my last slide, and I'm going to stop to see if there is any uh, questions. You Now you know my favorite ones. This is not end of the world. There are so many different species you can use. 